Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game. This is my first game from the 2024 World Tournament. And I am paired against Potato, and we he, uh, they preferred to play free people first, so it's a best two out of three. We're each going to play one side. Once I didn't have a preference, so I'm playing Shadow, they're playing free, and let's jump right in. So they get a pretty nice start. Uh, I think, you know, Riders of Theoden plus uh, Horn of Gondor are both playable cards with this Palantir, and they have an option to get Aragorn turn one if they give me a ring. So think for yourself, what would you do as three people? Would you get Aragorn turn one against two eyes and have to give free people or Shadow a ring, given that they already have two musters? Or would you just go and and just move the fellowship? So I have um, perfectly nice starting cards. Also, Rage of the Dunlings, I'm happy to see early, and I can plan around it. And uh, Worn with Sorrow and Toil obviously can be good to put on corruption pressure. So what do they do? Uh, they pass. Oh, we're talking over voice chat. So um, they pass, and then I muster Isengard to war. No surprise there. And then they decide to move the fellowship. So I think that's reasonable. If you see that Shadow is going to get Saruman turn one, then killing off Gandalf early can be good so that you can start to get Gandalf turn two if you get lucky. So, you know, I think this is totally reasonable. I probably would have played Riders of Theoden before moving. If my plan is to move, I'd rather cycle the strategy card or the character card, I guess. Um... I do get a hit, which is unlikely, and then they get a two, which is fine. You can kill off Gandalf with that. So they kill off Gandalf and, you know, minor, I think, drawback for not using the Palantir. The benefit of saving the Palantir is that you can use the Palantir to hide if you get revealed with, with Strider. But I don't know that I... Am I really going to move three times against two eyes? I, maybe. Maybe. You could. All right, I go ahead and play Warner Star and Toil now. And the reason why I didn't play it earlier is because I was worried they would it would encourage them to get Aragorn. And I didn't I didn't actually really want to encourage getting Aragorn. Um, and if they happen to have a card that would let them either move companions or separate companions, then they would be able to get Aragorn without even giving me a ring. And then they just declare in Rivendell again at the start of turn two and Warren of Sorrow and Toil is wasted. So this way, at least, yeah, they were able to um, avoid losing a card from Gandalf, but uh, now it's going to stay in effect for a while. All right, they play Horn of Gondor now, which, by the way, you can get rid of with Warren of Sorrow and Toil, but they'll probably use it before I have a chance to get rid of it, so that's good. Uh, I move armies from Baradur to Gorgoroth. They move the Fellowship again. I hit them again, and they get revealed. So not the best start for the Fellowship. I move my army to Morinon, and my military start is relatively slow. They muster... Uh, oh, no, they hide. Uh, wait, they used a Will of the West... What did they just do? They used a Will of the West to muster the elves one towards war. That's really interesting. I I would have been tempted to hide there, but okay. They can hide with any die with Strider next round, so not, not crazy. Okay, so they're mustering the elves towards war. And then I, of course, get Saruman. I had to wait until the end because if I had lost, um, if I had gotten Saruman sooner than the last action, then they would have been able to get Gandalf turn one with that Will of the West, which obviously would be quite bad for Shadow. And by the way, that is one benefit of tokens. We I had offered tokens for free people in the first two games, but they said no. Um, that is one of the benefits of tokens. You could have They could have delayed Saruman with a token on turn one, having lost Gandalf turn one. So, uh, all right. I get Lord of the Ring and Pits of Mordor. I'm happy to see those. And... They get Dead Men of Dunharrow and a Power Too Great. Obviously, Power Too Great is great <laughs> as it's, you know, if if uh, you can get it played before Shadow besieges Lorien. So these are perfectly good um, dice rolls, I think, for both of us. They get turn to Gandalf, which is great. I will say, imagine last round 
they went and got Aragorn instead of moving twice. They have five dice, and now these Palantirs, with Gandalf still as guide, end up being much more powerful card effects because you get to redraw. It's minor. You might not roll that many Palantirs. You might not have playable cards. But I think looking at all those playable cards in my hand, I would have been tempted. I would have been really tempted to get Aragorn turn one. All right. Uh, and just keep Gandalf as guide for a little bit longer. Okay, so they start by hiding the Fellowship. That's good. And of course, I mean, having Strider's guide is really good too because you get to do things like that and hide. And they made two progress. So yeah, I, I don't I don't fault them for that. Um, I made a mistake here. I didn't move an army, I think, onto the Fellowship in Holland when I could have. And I think I should have. My thinking was the incremental benefit of one extra six when I have four eyes is pretty low. But what I wasn't thinking was, yeah, you might hit them, but they might not get be re they might not be revealed. And then I think you really want to be able to maximize your chances for hitting them on the. Oh, they might only right. This is what I was thinking. Had I thought it all through, they'll probably only move once this round because they have a uh, character, only one character, and then they're going to get Gandalf. So think ahead to, to start of round three. And you realize that assuming they're not revealed, the first thing they should do at the beginning of round three is move to get past Moria. And therefore, I want to have my unit on them then for that move. And therefore, why not just do the move now while I have an extra army die? So that's thinking ahead a lot, but it's I think it's pretty foreseeable. So anyway, I'm I just muster. Um and then, of course, they move, which is correct, and I miss them. And now yeah, it's sad. Uh, should have just gotten on them before. Okay, so now I play Pits of Mordor. They get Gandalf. And uh, now, no, I don't, I still don't move an army on them now. Now they play a Power True Great, seeing that um, this army from Dol Guldur is coming towards Lorien. Elves are one away from war. And then at this point, finally, I move uh, an army unit onto the Fellowship, now at least foreseeing the start of next round when I really want to maximize my chances of revealing the Fellowship through Moria. All right, so we got, go on to next round. I would say going pretty well for the Fellowship at this point, um, especially if they can make it through Moria. I allocate one eye and um, get this roll, which is... Good, I think. Fine. I mean, obviously, a little more army movement is good, but still, I, I can't complain about that. And they get this very flexible roll, super, super flexible. And then um, they start by doing army movement. Um, and I think, I think this is a mistake because I think either with with three muster showing, muster the elves towards war. Let me get the witch king and. Um, then you can muster up the elves with these extra with these extra um, will of the west. Or if you're not going to do that, then I would think move the fellowship. Because if I have drawn any sort of a tile drawing card or a reveal card or anything that messes with the fellowship, you'd end up being revealed directly into Moria. Uh, which will get an extra tile. Um, so, yeah. So I think that was probably a, just a slight timing mistake. You don't need to do this movement from Edoras into Westamnet and from Carrick into Old Horse Road immediately. I think it's their higher priority things. Not that it's necessarily a bad move. I just think in terms of ordering, action ordering. All right. Uh, I did draw... Oh, I didn't even see that. So I did draw Orc Patrol. And obviously... If this hits with a reveal, that's going to be a bonus tile into Moria. So, and I do get a reveal. Uh, it's a zero reveal, but I'm obviously very happy with that. And and I had decent chances. I mean, the hunt the hunt pool. Um, I mean, not decent, but I guess it was it was four out of fourteen. So somewhere between a third, a quarter, and a third. All right, and then I get another. Um, reveal. Obviously, the eye would have been 
uh, the best result, but the getting another reveal tile here is like a little bit of a silver lining uh, because at least it's getting out of the pool while you're already revealed. Uh, and then they properly get rid of Horn of Gondor and take one corruption. All right. So I have Lure of the Ring here. All right. What do they do? They separate companions now. All right. So what's interesting is by being revealed into Moria, it did let them get the fellowship past Moria or like into Moria. And therefore Strider now with two moves can get to um, Minas Tirith. Now, could he have gotten to Minas Tirith before? One, two, three, four to Fords of Aizen. And then one, two, and it's a little risky to be in Fords of Aizen in case I attack out of there and kill him. So yeah, so um, so if you want to get um, Strider, and I see Legolas, or Legolas here will also be able to get to Lorien. Um, it actually in some ways was good to be revealed into... Um, Moria, but I, I don't, I still don't think that's worth it because you can just move once and then you'll have five movement anyway. All right, let's continue. So he, uh, they separate into East of Net, Um, and that's pretty good. All right. I move armies. They, I don't have anything to, to punish the fellowship being revealed. Oh, and this may, might be sort of a side consequence of Warn with Sauron Toil. When you play Warn with Sauron Toil, the fact that um, the fellowship is separating companions reduces the amount of cards that they will lose to Warn with Sauron Toil. So it, it, it's an interesting effect because it sort of provokes free people to separate companions, which can be good for Shadow and bad, depending on what the military situation is. And I didn't play Lore of the Ring. And maybe I should have while they're revealed. My thinking was uh, Lore of the Ring does not cause uh, a casualty. Um, and so you don't get the trigger from Worn with Sorrow and Toil when combined with Lore of the Ring. And so my thinking was, uh, particularly now that Strider is gone and the expected damage from Lore of the Ring is one and a half, because either I'm going to get a two or a one, um, I could just wait and play it as a one corruption guaranteed once once they get down to Gollum, and I'll end up getting rid of an extra card with Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Um, I guess extra half a card, because if I draw a Hobbit, it doesn't actually increase the number of... Um, yeah, the number of corruption that you do, or the number of cards they lose. So yeah, so I guess I traded half... Uh, an expected corruption for half a card, uh, half a card discarded from free people. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should have just played Lord of the Ring. The other thing was um, I can use that character die to actually move armies around and I need to get my armies into position. I want to besiege these elven strongholds before they get too strong. So um, I guess that's my thinking. Uh, if it were a Palantir, I probably would have played it. But given that it's not... Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, he, they move companions, getting them position. I get rid of power too great, and oh yeah, right. So maybe I was just thinking I will. I, I want to be prepared to attack Lorien if they start mustering. Yes, it may make the do line impossible, but at least I will. Uh, you know, at least I'll be able to besiege Lorien this way. So. I get rid of Power to Great now. I'm happy to get rid of Day Without Dawn because it remains a threat. I mean, I don't love getting rid of any card, but happy to get rid of Day Without Dawn in this way that's secret because then they're still going to have to play around it the whole game. And then Lord of the Ring goes away. So, all right. Uh, they get Aragorn and I muster a Nazgul into... Interesting. So I'm mustering Nazgul. I guess I just want to be prepared with... I don't know what I want to move. I want to use this uh, character die to move this army from Moria, from Moria into Dimrald Dale. And I need a leader there to be able to do it. I guess that's what I'm thinking. They pass. I move armies. And I guess my thinking is if they muster the elves to war, I will 
be prepared at the start of next round to get in there. It's a little weird. I wonder why I didn't save that. Why I didn't... Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. If they muster the elves to war, I get the Witch King. So I'm happy to trade Witch King turn three in exchange for one extra elite in Lorien. And now I'm getting my army in position in Dimmerdale. So that's good. All right. So they hide the fellowship. That makes sense. And now I muster up um, using the voice because I have Rage of the Dunlandings. I know that I can reposition these North and South Dunland units at some point to do something productive with them. And I would maybe be able to sneak into Rivendell because I already have this unit in Holland that could be good. So we'll see what happens. All right. There it's six dice turn four. Turn two, Gandalf. Turn three, Aragorn. I haven't even gotten the Witch King yet. They get Faramir's Rangers, and I will go alone. Okay, probably not going to use I will go alone, but maybe they could uh, even do that to avoid losing it. And I get Morgul Wound and Many Kings. I'm happy to see these. These are all good cards to be getting. I allocate one eye, roll one more, and they get, you know, pretty flexible roll. It seems good. And now they they move the fellowship right away, which which is correct because if I had gotten another tile drawing card, I could have played it while they were still in Moria. All right, so um, I miss them. Obviously, sad to not hit in either of the moves into or out of Moria. Um, Sometimes you know you're they're playing it slow, which is I think good to only be moving around Moria with sixes. But I don't know exactly what they're going to do with these extra palantir dice or extra character dice. All right, I get an army formed up in Minus Morgul. I continue my march towards the Dew Line. They um, advance the elves towards war using Legolas's ability, which I think is really nice use of Legolas's ability because it leaves them with two musters this round. If they had to use a muster this round, then they would have only been able to get one extra unit in there. So this is just, I think, a really nice example of the options that you get when you have companions on, on the map. Yeah, it costs some corruption, so maybe not worth it, but all right. But I think this is a nice example. So I'll go ahead. I obviously besiege Lorien. I don't I don't want to let that get any bigger. They might even have Celeborn, so um, at least this way, this army has a, a decent chance of taking it out, even with Legolas inside. They muster into Woodland Realm. I march towards Woodland Realm and move Farharad to Nirharad, and... Um, and then they move the fellowship a second time, which is interesting. You know, they have a lot of character dice. What else can they do with it? Uh, not really anything. They're not too worried about losing either of these character cards. So I, I think this makes sense. Um, and now I manage to hit them and I draw an eye. So obviously good to reveal them. I think that's pretty expected with two moves with, f you know, four dice. So they get revealed out. They just take one corruption. Then I draw a two and they lose Boromir. And then um, I get to get one card from Mornosar and Toil, which is I will go alone. Probably, you know, pr pretty good card um, to get rid of. I think that's fine. Uh, I get to play Morgul Wound here for maximum effectiveness. Two corruption, they hide. And then I decide to slow down my military a little bit and put some corruption on the fellowship. I've been making good corruption progress already. I have worn with Sauron and Toil, so I, th I figure let's keep the pressure on and get two rerolls. And then I move towards the fellowship. I mean, I move towards Gondor to just put a little pressure on, on Aragorn, see what happens there. And then they get their armies in position. I would have been a little tempted to play Faramir's Rangers there. I don't think it's super likely, but... Um, I guess what they were worried about was not shoring up in, um, in Iron Hills. I mean, in, in Erebor. So, all right. And then I get, I get the Witch King, obviously, now that the elves are at war. And, um, they get rid of Riders of Theoden, which I'm really surprised about. I feel like that is an excellent card. It lets you muster in Lor uh, Rohan, obviously not particularly useful right now, but if they get a Hobbit, which is possible, they could get a Hobbit into um, Helm's Deep. It is the only card, Riders of Theoden is the only card that lets you muster in a siege of Helm's Deep. All of the other car all of the other strongholds have cards that just let you do that without a companion there, but for Helm's Deep, you have to have a companion 
in Helm's Deep, and and you have to have Riders of Theoden. So, um, and also Daylight is an incredibly defensive combat effect. So I, I would have saved that. I probably would have gotten rid of Dead Men of Dunharrow, but you do have Aragorn in play, so that's good. Maybe I would have gotten rid of an Ent. A zero tile is nice, but I might have gotten rid of that too. I don't know. Um, maybe they just felt like, look, I have Aomer. It's going to be, Rohan's going to be defended enough. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that is the right play. The scouts are obviously good against um, Woodland Realm. All right. Uh, I allocate two eyes here. And... Um, I just want to keep the corruption pressure on. I guess that's what I'm thinking. I don't with with six dice, my opponent is very likely to roll multiple um, movement. You know, they're expected to get about three movement. So I want to if they, I, you know, one extra die on a six doesn't matter that much. Even two extra dice doesn't matter that much with a six. But on the five, if they move a second time, that extra eye can really make a difference, especially if it's effectively two two extra rolls because I have two re rolls. So. That's my thinking. Uh, I roll one more eye, which is fine with me, and then they get three three movement, which is about what's expected. Um, they start by playing Faramir's Rangers. Obviously, that's really good. They get one hit and just power up Osgiliath. So that, that's an excellent situation for them. I What am I doing? I play many kings. I don't know exactly what I'm planning here and why I'm not just attacking in I don't understand this play <laughs> if somebody can explain this play to me uh I don't know I'm just oh maybe I'm trying to temporize because what I really want to do is play Rage of the Dunlandings into Rivendell I I don't know I do have shadows on the Misty Mountains which can be useful out of Moria and I don't want to put the north to war yet. I don't know. I don't know why I'm playing that. With I mean, this is such a flexible die. I could muster the Southrons and Easterlings towards war with it. I could move armies around with it. I don't know. That's a surprise. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I undo it. Uh, that's funny. Okay. So apparently... <laughs> Ah, apparently uh, my past self, Ira, also questioned that move and decided to undo it. All right. Instead, I play Candles of Corpses. Okay, this makes more sense. I mean, not that I was in a huge rush to get rid of. Um, like, there was no way that they could have gone down to zero um, companions right away. But yeah, this makes more sense. All right. Wow. And I get three hits. So that is unlikely. You expect one and a half. Only one out of eight to get three hits. So that's that's good. All right, they move the fellowship now, and I do hit them. I had five dice on a six, so not crazy to get one hit. And I get a three. They lose Gimli and then a Hobbit. And then look, the Hobbit, exactly. This is what I was foreseeing with, with Riders of the Eden. All right, so the Hobbit goes to Fangorn. Um, they lose some character card. I don't know what it was. It was whatever they... Oh, it was um, Dead Men of Dunharrow. So they just lost <clears throat> Dead Men of Dunharrow. Oh, that's another reason to maybe keep Riders of Theoden because it's not a character card. So you could end up um, playing out all your character cards and then moving. But I don't know. Just You're just losing one more character card. So just risk it. Anyway, so they lose Dead Men of Dunharrow. That is a little sad because Dead Men of Dunharrow can be quite powerful in um, stalling uh, the shadow when they're coming into Pilar gear. All right. Um, and it's just good recruiting in in uh, in Gondor. It's a way of spending a character die and a Palantir die to get one and a half musters in Pilar gear, which is kind of cool. All right. Now I play many kings. Okay. I really want to play many kings. I don't know. I guess it, yeah. I want to get it out of my hand. I, oh, okay. Okay. I want to play it first and then I'm like, I'm going to use this army movement to get this army ready. I haven't gotten all the musters I need, but I'm, I'm basically just ordering my army movement and I need to play it first before doing the army movement. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. All right. So then they play Elven Cloaks. I think that makes total sense to play that before. Um, oh, they can't lose any more to Warnos Aron Toils. That's not really a concern. 
Uh, but still, why not play it? Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't know. I would also consider Aomer. There's not a huge rush now in playing Elven Cloaks. And there could be a situation where I crash in to Helm's Deep. And I would rather use that muster up in uh, Woodland Realm. So I'd rather use this Palantir to play Aomer and the muster to play um, the muster in, in Woodland Realm, I think. All right. I move armies. Okay. I'm, <clears throat> I don't have um, Corsairs, so I'm just going in the hard way into um, Dol Amroth. And, um, and then they muster Gondor here. And, and part of me wonders, like, did I misplay some of this movement earlier? Because if I had a, um, I have three attacks left and I could get all the way to Dol Amroth. So if I had, if I had a, a leader here, so if I, anyway, all right. So, um, I go, oh, never, what am I talking about? I, the South Rounds and Easterlings aren't at war. Okay, so that's not a real threat yet. Fine. Um, so they use, this is interesting, they use a character die to just reposition armies into Helm's Deep. And I guess their thinking is they can't really push the fellowship too much, so they might as well shore up their military defenses. That That's good. All right. Um, I attack into... Lorien. So I think I'm just taking a try at Lorien. Um, I don't want to put the North to war yet. I want to finish up Lorien before they get to muster a bunch. If they draw um, Celeborns, that would be bad. Um, so I just want to try and soften up Lorien. I don't have any card that I really want to play because I want to save Rage of the Dunlendings for the card effect and Shadows on the Misty Mountain for the card effect. It's a little sad to be attacking without playing a card when you have the Witch King there and with only three leadership. So this is definitely an inefficient way of taking Lorien, but I'm not sure what else I should be doing. Maybe I should be going after Woodland Realm with these guys. I guess I figure he probably has scouts. Maybe I'll draw into Swarm of Bats at some point or a t an, an opportunity where I can fork attacking Woodland Realm and simultaneously attacking um, Rivendell, where he can't defend all of them, or also attacking Dol Amroth. So I kind of want to just, maybe he won't muster into Woodland Realm. All right, so I get 1-6. Um, he gets one hit back. So fine, fine, nothing special. It's whittling away. And then they muster into Woodland Realm, which I think is a good play. Like, clearly, I'm going to be attacking up there at some point. That's that's smart. Uh, I attack into Lorien again. I get one more hit. They get one hit back. Fine. Nothing too special here. And then they lose a regular instead of an elite because they feel like Lorien is a lost cause. And they don't want to use up the last, um, the last regular in the pool. And that is a way of also potentially causing problems for Woodland Realm and um, Rivendell because if they don't if they don't have any regulars in the in the force pool, and you have to lose an elite, then you end up like going straight from an elite to a regular. Uh, a re they just kill an elite. So so it would be it would make it would potentially make um, Rivendell quite vulnerable by losing that last elite in the, or by losing the last regular in the force pool and none in the casualties yet. So I think that was actually a very good play to lose that, lose that regular in Lorien. Uh, and very foresightful because I do have Rage of the Dunlinings and Shadows on the Misty Mountains, which can mount an attack on, uh, on Rivendell very quickly. All right, so we go to next round. I have Fighting Urukai at Little Asai. Theoretically, actually, could be useful against um, against uh, Legolas in uh, in Lorien, and uh, they declare the Fellowship. That's good. Ooh, Mithril Coat and Sting, very good. And uh, I get you know a fairly mediocre roll. They get a fairly mediocre roll. Uh, I mean, it's okay as long as they get two movement. Fine. They start by they pass. All right, interesting. So. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted to get rerolls on them, obviously, but I also want to have my army movements be efficient. 
I don't know. It's a little it's a little weird that I didn't just like I just drew a character card, but why didn't I I think that was a mistake. I should have just done an army movement. I could get North Rune to East Rune and then my Parth Celebrant army onto East of Net. So that's it's probably a mistake to draw a character card. All right, now they move. So both of us were just blind to that. They passed and then I just didn't get on the fellowship. Okay, but I get a six anyway. So lucky for me. Uh, and I reveal them. They take, uh, they, oh no, I don't reveal them. They lose their last Hobbit, which goes into Helm's Deep. And now Gollum is guided so they don't get revealed. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, I now get the army on them that should have been on them before, but doesn't really affect things. And then they draw a strategy card. Fair enough. And I play Black Captain Commands to get full uh, leadership in Lorien. Now, maybe I should have saved that, but I think it's nice to get the two, two Nazgul. Um, had I been thinking really far ahead, I would have realized that I do have Shadows on Misty Mountains, which I can play later. And maybe I want to reposition, I want to save this as a way to reposition Nazgul using a Palantir instead of a character die, because it's not guaranteed that you roll a character die. Uh, so, but whatever, I'm happy to have five leadership in this battle. And uh, I'm going to cycle uh, Words of Power. They play Daylight here. That's interesting. I, I would have been tempted to play something like Confusion instead of Daylight, just to hope, because anyway, uh, my two extra leadership didn't even matter in this attack. I still get one hit. They get two hits against me, obviously good. Um, and I stop because I have to take it slow against uh, against Legolas. And they play Aomer now. I attack into Lorien again, continuing to cycle uh, Flocks of Crabane. All right, that's good. Now they play Confusion. Okay, so I mean, they're, they're playing it well. Um, I get the two hits, and I do one to myself, but two hits. So not crazy. It's about what, would you, what we'd expect. And I actually got three hits, but I only needed two. And they get three hits against me back, leaving a very small force in Lorien. Obviously, it's nice to have a bigger force in Lorien so that you can reposition down to Helm's Deep. But I spent like five dice, uh, but I did get to cycle some character cards. So, And I draw Breaking the Fellowship. That's another corruption damage to them. All right, they get... Gondor to war, and uh, I get the Southrons and Easterlings to war. They start mustering up in Dol Amroth. I'm attacking somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. Maybe it's Pelargir, or maybe it's um, Dale. I don't know. I'm assuming it's Pelargir, but I guess we'll see in a second. All right, so it was Pelargir. I don't get a hit. They retreat to Lamadon. All right, and now they muster into Lasarnach and a leader into... Uh, Dol Amroth, and I didn't really leave myself with great options for this uh, Palantir. Maybe that's a good argument for not using um, Black Captain Commands earlier, but then I still would have had a Palantir left over. So yeah, um, I guess I was hoping to cycle into better character cards or have something useful here, so be it. Uh, I think I just play, yeah, I play Shadows on the Misty Mountain for two elites in Moria with the idea that these guys can either come south or I can go maybe sneak into Rivendell at some point. The Elven Force Pool is still decently strong, um, but with Rage of the Dunlandings, I can make a pretty fast attack. All right, Threats and Promises, pretty useless. Nazgul Search can certainly be good. There are not many things that reveal the Fellowship outside of um, Mordor when Gollum is guide. So I do still, I do have three eyes in here, but Nazgul Search is nice to guarantee the reveal. All right, they declare the fellowship in Druiden Forest and I allocate one eye rolling no more and no Palantirs and no characters. So my leadership is stuck where it is right now. Pretty painful and I don't have a ring. Uh, and they get this nice roll against only a single eye. So while the Fellowship is in bad shape at seven corruption, I would have been very tempted right now as free people to just try and book it into Mordor 
I can't play any either of these character cards. So if I have something like Cruel Weather or anyway, we'll see what happens. So they move and they're safe. That's fine. And now um, I'm just trying to cause trouble because what else can I do? I have a bunch of I have a bunch of movement. I might as well try and take advantage of the military moment and see what can happen. So I attack into Las Arnok, leaving one regular, and at least now I'm like threatening to mess with um threatening to mess with Strider there or Aragorn. And they think for a while and then they end up just moving with a character everyone into Minas Tirith, which I am super happy to see. Like I am so happy for them to try and defend Minas Tirith like that. I have tons of armies that can come in and um, it seems like maybe they're not trying to get the fellowship to Mordor this round, which is also fine with me. And they didn't leave anybody in Osgiliath, so I can just move in with a muster. I mean, with an army movement, I go ahead and play Rage of the Dunlendings now. And I'm foreseeing that this army can either go up to Rivendell or come down, I guess, all the way to Minas Tirith. It's not exactly clear to me. The problem is I have no character dice this turn. So I have to maybe reposition um, the Witch King using um, army movements. I don't, I don't exactly know what's best. I start moving armies. I surround uh, Aragorn. They muster an elite into Minas Tirith. I move armies from Lorien um, and merge up in Parth Celebrant. I don't know if it was better to go towards Rivendell. Maybe it was better to go towards Rivendell with this army. This army could have formed up and gone up to Rivendell. My concern was they had two elites that they would be able to spend. Um, pretty, They had one, I think they had a couple musters. And I don't think I was able to wait long enough they have two, they have elites in the force pool. I don't think I was able to wait long enough for them to, um, like they could see where I was going. So yeah, I, I really don't know. I'd be very curious. What would you have done with this round? You see that the fellowship is pretty early on, not going into Mordor. You have a ton of army movement, but no character dice to reposition leaders. I don't know. The other thing I considered was attacking from Minas Tirith, from um, Lasarnach into Minas Tirith to just mess with this army. I don't know. Um, and there's still a chance right now that the Fellowship could make it to Mordor. Like, I'm not totally sure. It seems like they're not. But, all right, so now I merge up. Now this is a nice army. I have this army into the Vale of Karnan. And then they play Fearfire Foes to reposition this giant army in Minas Tirith. So, okay. I regret a little bit that I didn't get an elite unit. I thought about earlier getting an elite unit into North or South Dunland, which would have given me a reroll against Gandalf down here. Um, I do have Devilry of Orthanc, and I do have Fighting Uruk High. So these units can be useful. I also wonder at this point, should I go try and take Rohan? Ents, uh, no Ent cards can be played. Maybe I just go take Rohan now? What would you do? Um, there are like tons of, tons of options for what to do. And look at this like giant army in Minas Tirith. I feel so tempted to go, to go fight them. Um, because my thinking is if I go fight them now, Either I'm going I'm to take out Gandalf. I feel like with this amount of force all around it, I should be able to take them out. Or they're going to have to spend a die to run away, and then the Fellowship isn't making it to Mordor this round. Or maybe you just go off and go after Helm's Deep and take out Rohan when you can. What would you do? Uh, leave in the comments what would you do. This is turn seven. Leave a uh, you know a note what time it is at 39 in the video. Um if you type 3-9 and then the colon, then you can see. Uh, if you type 3-9 colon 0, zero then, then anybody clicking on that will jump to this point in the video. All right, anyway, uh, I move armies around. So I just shuffle armies around, prepared to like take out Minas Tirith. And then they do something that is completely shocking to me. Um, 
Oh, okay, wait. I'm I'm fixing exactly what the army movement. Would, no, okay, whatever. All right, so they they are. Um, I moved armies into Osgiliath. That's what I ended up doing, and into Druid Enforced. I like this because um, I get units on the on the fellowship, which is what I wanted. Um, and it seems like they're trying to heal in Minas Tirith, so I'm going to go try and take out Minas Tirith. But then they do a thing that I did not expect at all, which is that they attack out of Minas Tirith into the Witch King, is what they're doing. So they're attacking Minas Tirith to, to Druid and Forest, and they're playing a card. So I'm so happy with this. This is totally fine with me. Obviously, I don't want to lose the Witch King, but I'm so happy to whittle down Minas Tirith, and I'm really happy that the Fellowship isn't making it to Mortar this round. This is all good for me, in my opinion. They play Brave Stand. Obviously, that's good for them. And um, they get three hits, which is probably about what you'd expect with the amount of leadership they have. And um, I get one hit, which is slightly uh, uh, yeah, it's slightly above average. You expect two thirds of a hit. And uh, so they take one and then they press. And uh, I'm staying because I'm happy to be whittled down. Like I'm just, I'm so happy to just whittle down their army and whittle down my army. It's fine. Uh, they play a character card here. I have nothing useful to play. I'm not going to spend Onslaught because I just want to sit here and soak up damage and just do do it the hard way. Uh, they play Blade of Westerness. Obviously, I don't want to lose the Witch King. Witch King is bad, but I'm happy to see min the like Mithril Coat and Sting go away. That is one of the most powerful corruption-saving cards in the game. So at this point, I know as long as I can just keep their military under control, then I think I'm going to win the long game corruption-wise. So better to let them spend it this way. And then they get five hits on their combat roll. So uh, it doesn't, so Mithril Code and Sting doesn't work because uh, they can't, they have no leadership reroll. You can't reroll dice that hit on the combat roll. So, I don't know that you're ever really sad to get five hits on your combat roll. And this is very unlikely. I don't remember exactly what the chances are. Um, but I think it was like either 1% or let's, let's calculate it. So um, it is basically one third chance for getting a hit on every die to the fifth power. So um, one third, uh, I'm just doing it on my calculator, on my phone. One third raised to the fifth power is, oh right, half a percent. One in 250, actually it's like 0.4 of a percent. So one in 250 tries will you get five hits on the first roll. I think I, I, I did, I remember doing some analysis on this after the game that I won't repeat right now in great detail, but I remember there was like a quite a high chance of killing the Witch King here with Mithril Coat and Sting uh, hitting on fives with five leadership. So um, yeah, a little bit of bad luck, I guess, for them to not kill the Witch King here. Uh, and I get two hits back, which is about close to what you'd expect. So um, this army is decimated. I keep the elites because I decide that I'm going to be retreating now. Uh, and I retreat. I don't know exactly where is best to retreat, but I retreat to dead marshes. So um, I'm going to pause for a moment and we'll be back in a second.
Wow. All of my audio is off. Well, let's keep going. And uh, <laughs> what a mess. Well, it turns out if you pause the video for a whole day, then uh, it can cause trouble. I had to pause the video for an entire day. Um, maybe I'll edit that out. Maybe I won't. We'll find out later. But for now, uh, just to catch you up on what happened, uh, I shuffled armies around. They moved to Eastamnet, and I besieged Minas Tirith, and now they've healed a little bit in Minas Tirith, which was their whole goal. In the end, I wonder if it would have been better to just make it to uh, Minus Morgul when I only had one eye and no character dice or Palantir showing. But it is what it is. Okay, I allocate one eye. And then I roll one more, and I only get three attacks. So on eight dice, you'd expect to get four attacks. All right, three isn't crazy. They get five attacks. We'd expect them to get about four attacks. So they're getting one extra attack. I'm getting one fewer attack. This is all, you know, well within reasonable probability. But what that means is they're going to get to take out Lorien. I'm not going to be able to follow them. I have to be judicious with my attacks. So they muster an elite into Dol Amroth, which surprises me a little bit. I mean, I feel like they can threaten quite a bit with this army. I I guess they were worried about me playing Day Without Dawn. With six dice being rolled, I'm usually not unhappy if Shadow uses Day Without Dawn on one on one die because then I know for the rest of the game I can leave my Wills of the West open and there are plenty of times when there's some chance that over the next I don't know five turns I'm going to roll two or even three Wills and I don't want to risk that so I'm happy to I'm often happy to get it out of the way particularly on a turn where there isn't a ton that I have to do and I have an otherwise flexible roll so and I wonder if I am going to use that why not use it to move? I mean, I know that I want this army to get to Lorien. I think maybe they're threatening to go for a military victory in Dol Guldur. I don't, I don't know. Um, but by spending that Will of the West, I'm very, I'm very happy to see that Will of the West be spent. All right. I play Fighting Urk High. Uh, what? I don't, what am I attacking with this? I don't, whoa, did something weird happen? So I definitely had regulars coming down from um, North Dunland, and I did have fighting uruk in hand. So there might be something wrong in the log because I, I definitely had, I definitely had um, Isengard regulars with me, right? Because I played Rage of the Dunlandings. I marched this army all the way down here. No, but... Oh, 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 ha, I know what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm playing this for the combat effect is what's happening. I, I did actually, I wanted to play this for the card effect, but I don't have any regulars because they got annihilated in Druidan Forest. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm attacking Minas Tirith with this die and I'm playing Onslaught as a combat effect with the intent of uh, taking out this lone regular if I have to, because I don't want to have to spend extra attack dice right now. And I don't want to play around with letting this uh, stronghold get stronger. So I miss on the attack roll and then I sacrifice four units. And now I do, I am careful to leave to Sauron regulars because if, I don't know, this army doubles back or whatever, I don't know, things get out of control. I am thinking about how to protect the strongholds that I take using hill trolls. So I'm leaving to, I'm, I'm being careful about what casualties I take here. Uh, and I do get two hits there, or three hits actually. So it was a little bit of overkill. Maybe I should have saved more, uh, but I just didn't want to mess around. All right. So I, that was played as a combat effect. That was all correct. Good. All right. Uh, they move towards Parth Celebrant. And I draw a strategy card. And they pass. I I guess get an elite in Moria. My thinking is, I don't know what. Um, maybe someday I'll come back and take Lorien. Maybe they're coming towards Moria and I want to defend against it a little bit. They move the fellowship. Oh, right. That was the other reason I forgot. 
ah, I needed to take Minas Tirith so that the fellowship could stop healing. I didn't want the fellowship to keep healing here. So that's why I, I took it over. And it, had I not gotten, had I not won that round of combat, I didn't have other um, army dice. So I would have had to spend a whole action to move my Nazgul around. And then I would have had to attack again using this character dice. So it would have been particularly inefficient. So that's why I just didn't mess around with the onslaught and took it out for sure. And now the fellowship can't keep healing. And so they move. I miss them. And I muster another elite into Moria. Maybe they're going to let me muster up enough to be able to defend in Lorien. I have to be careful about mustering too many uh, elites because then my hill trolls will become useless. But... I'm okay mustering up in Lorien. I'm going to, I think my plan is to march this army over to wherever this army lands to just try and whittle them down more. They attack Lorien, which I think is, makes a lot of sense. And now I get my armies along the way. They draw strategy cards. I move armies again. If Rohan were weaker, I might just go after Rohan. But at this point, I'm happy to try and pin down Aragorn and Gandalf. They um, attack Lorien and take out that lone orc. And I draw a character card because... Right. So I guess my thinking is, military is going really slowly. I'm going to just maintain focus on the fellowship. I'm going to get as many bad character cards as I can before they get into... Mordor, if I have to just be slow on military, as long as I'm not losing a military fight, as long as I can eventually inflict six more corruption before they destroy the ring, it, relative to all of the healing they might do, I'm just going to I'm just gonna continue to stay focused on the Fellowship. So I end up drawing a character card even while my hand was full, and I'm about to end the round. And that's kind of cool. I, I don't usually play this way, but... I think it was the right choice. It wasn't the best action roll that I've ever had. I'm happy to see Cruel Weather. Now, I need to reveal them out of Minas Tirith to be able to actually benefit from Cruel Weather. Otherwise, it just doesn't do any good because that is the benefit of staying in um, a stronghold like Minas Tirith or Lorien or Rivendell. It effectively makes you immune to cruel weather cruel weather technically can be played but it just doesn't help um delay the fellowship in any way if you're starting from a stronghold so that's i think that's a really cool aspect of the map design so um with Gollum as the guide i have to hit them and then roll one of these eyes or probably a three might reveal them out if they if i get hit and draw three they might end up using the Gollum's ability i don't know so I'm going to get rid of Worm Tongue clearly, and I don't know what else. Worm Tongue and. What else is it? Mustering of Long Planned War. So, um, Desperate Battle is really good, but I want to keep all my character cards in case. I mean, certainly Nazgul Search I can play at some point. Uh, Breaking the Fellowship I can play at some point, and maybe I'll get a chance to play Cruel Weather. And then otherwise, what do I keep? I think I'm happy to have Grand as either an extra attack if I start to do well militarily or just as a character card to be able to cycle when playing against, um, I don't know, somewhere. I can't use it against Gandalf because I won't have Nazgul leadership to forfeit, but I will be able to use it somewhere at some point. All right. I allocate an eye and roll one more. They now get a pretty bad roll. So I get one, two, three, four attacks, which is what we'd expect, but they only get two. So that is, this is quite a bad roll for them. I don't know exactly where this army wants to go anyway, though, and they don't want to move the fellowship super fast. So maybe it's actually okay because then they can just cycle character cards. Just looking at what they have here. Yeah, and interestingly, I saw them discard Book of Mazarbal. Which is a little interesting because you might need to run away with Strider and, and Gandalf. They do have We Prove the Swifter, so I guess I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so they pass. I muster another elite in Moria because I might as well use my, my musters. They muster more in Dol Amroth, which is a little surprising to me. I would have been tempted to 
I mean, that gives them that gets them an extra half um, hit point. But I would have been tempted to muster the elite into Lorien. I don't know. I guess they're a little wary of using up too much of the Elven Force Pool. But I don't think I can just leave this army unchecked. I guess they want to make sure they have some defense of Rivendell if they need. They do have Keratin ships too. So, yeah, that's a, that's a tough call. I don't know exactly what I would do. Maybe, yeah. All right, anyway. Um... Oh, and also, finally, I drew um, I drew a Swarm of Bats, which now that I have Swarm of Bats, I'm much more willing to attack against th this army when it's not in a stronghold. Like, I was I was wary of making any attacks out on the map because they can scouts away and, and just get really far away from me, especially if I have fewer attacks than they do. So, all right. So I go ahead and move armies here. And my thinking is... What are these guys gonna do? Like, I need to go take out. I need to go take out Lorian. Are they gonna run away? Are they gonna stay there? I don't know. So they attack. They attack Dimrel Dale, and they use Thrandall's archers. That's what's happening right now. This whole army is attacking Dimrel Dale, which, quite honestly, I'm a little surprised by. I think it would have been. If they had mustered in Lorien first, then they could have spent this action using a Palantir to run away and leave. I mean, you could leave um, leave Pippin behind. So you have a leader in Lorien. And uh, I don't know, maybe this army is just going to crush Lorien again. But at least you make it hard with nine hit points and three leadership like that. That'd be pretty hard to take. Because you're really just trying to buy time for the Fellowship. All right. In any case, they attack into Dimmerl Dale. Again, I'm totally happy with this. I want them to just, you know, I just want to whittle down this army. All right. So they get three hits. I get two hits back, which is obviously great for my army in Dimmerl Dale. They, that's how they take their two. And then I just reduce my elites and I now I'm back up to enough elites for hill trolls again so I'm happy with my mustering in Moria and then they press and I'm like I'm gonna stay I'm like go ahead I'm happy to just be whittling you down and you whittle me down all right and then they get four hits here which is you know probably a little above average but uh, it's fine and I get one more hit so these are all pretty average combat rolls and then they leave one person behind in Lorien and now they just have three regulars sitting here in Dimmerl Dale. And I, I I think I think this whole thing served me very well. They're spending their character die and um, just putting Gandalf and Aragorn in harm's way. And because I'm going to attack into Dimmerl Dale, there's no opportunity for them... Like, they're not going to be able to just walk into Moria because I have a chance to react right now. So... If they have scouts, you cannot retreat using scouts into a location that's owned by the opponent, that's controlled by the opponent. So maybe they were thinking they could scout into Moria and take it that way, but you can't actually. Uh, and either way, I have Swarm of Bats now. So um, I attack, I play, I, whatever it is, I'm definitely playing uh, Swarm of Bats, and then I'm just trying to get three hits. Uh, on five dice. Obviously not great chances of getting three hits on five dice because Gandalf is shining, but I'm still going to probably do something. Um, and I get no hits. <laughs> so a little sad, but whatever. It's fine. I'm making progress. They get two hit. They get three hits back. Also fine with me. And then I press the attack because where are they going to go? They only have one uh, army movement left and I still have two attacks left. So... I um I decide to move everybody into Dimmerl Dale because I'm just going to be attacking Lorien. What are they going to do? I, are they going to... I just don't know what they're going to do. Uh, they use a Will of the West to move characters. And I don't think I would have done that. I would have used... We, I think I would have used We Prove the Swifter so that I can now... So I don't have to give Shadow a ring to move the Fellowship and I can still move the Fellowship once. So I think that was a little inaccuracy there. And I probably, 
Yeah, I mean, at this point, this army is easily going to take out the Lorien army. But if they hadn't done all those shenanigans, then... Yeah, I think they just would have... It would have been a much harder fight for me in Lorien. I probably still would have won it, but... They would have had one fewer dice spent because they would just would have run away r right away and they could have mustered into Lorien. All right, anyway. Uh, and now they play Cairdon Ships. Okay, okay, I see. I see. So their plan... So they, they foresaw all of this. Their plan was to just make a mega army in Dol Amroth and get, get going with this army to maybe retake Minas Tirith again. Maybe to let the Fellowship reheal. Ah, okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five... Six or one, two, three, four, five, six, five, I guess you get with Reprove the Swifter. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, they play, I play Grand here. So that's obviously a very nice use of a Palantir die to get to attack and just uh, take out Lorien. I'm not playing any cards because I just don't need to. And Lorien falls. I still have a decent army here. And I start mustering up in Moria again. I guess I just didn't know where to muster. I still have two, uh, plenty of um, elites all over. They give me a ring to move now, and I miss. Obviously a little sad for me, but fine. They have, you know, they're, they're moving slowly. And I muster again in, in Moria. I wonder where I'm going. Oh, maybe I'm going to Rivendell. They only have one elite left. The north is not yet at war. So I just have this army sitting outside the northern border. I march them all the way up early, early in the game. And they just sat in northern Rovanian forever. And look, I have mega army in Vale of Karnan. I'm just sitting outside the borders. So at some point, maybe I'll have a chance to sneak in and make some productive attacks. But I guess my plan is reposition this army either down to Fords of Eisen when I attack into Rohan. Or go up to attack Rivendell because now the Elven Force Pool is quite light. So, all right. I get Isildur's Bane, which I'm obviously happy to see. And um, I don't know what I'm going to discard here. It feels like maybe Orcs Multiplying again. Okay. I allocate one eye, roll no more. And I have a bunch of Palantirs again. And they get a very nice flexible roll. So this is this is great for them. They can do whatever they want. So I think, I mean, I don't think you have time to retake Minas Tirith and keep healing there. And you just spent a ring last turn to move the Fellowship. So I think the Fellowship is getting in. And then what else do you do with all of your dice? Maybe what you do is use these Wills of the West to draw character cards. Because at the moment... You know, you actually do have a decent amount of time militarily and you have all these blue tiles. And if you can get a negative two or a negative one going up Mordor, that can really swing things. I think they also have there is another way. They used Mithrocote and Sting already, which is obviously very sad for them. And um, what's interesting is I have drawn no red tiles. I'm, I'm 14 cards deep and no red tiles yet. I am happy to see Isildur's Bane before they get into... Uh, um, Mordor, though, and I guess maybe these Palantirs aren't so bad, given my strategy. I'm just taking it slow militarily. But you don't want to go too, too slow, because then they can draw all of their character cards, too. All right, so they move the Fellowship right away. I miss them, and that's that. So I go ahead and play Nazgul Search now, because I'm happy to reposition my Nazgul, I guess. I don't know exactly where I want to send them. I guess maybe I'm going to go take out... I'm going to go try and take out Erebor. I'm going to go take out Woodland Realm. Yeah, all right. So I go over to take out Woodland Realm. Uh, the Fellowship is now revealed into Minus Morgul. Let's see what I get. One. Okay. So, you know, um, the expected amount of corruption damage inflicted, you just add up all of the tiles. So this was... 3 plus 3 is 6, 7, 8, 9, divided by 8, because there were 8 tiles in there, we would expect this tile pull to do 9 eighths of a corruption point, and it did 1. So very close to what was expected. Um, and I'm fine with that. You know, great. Get that tile out of there. 
So they and they have to take the corruption. I do it now because I um with Gollum as guide, there was nothing that was actually stopping them from hiding. So the reason why you typically don't hide the fellowship in Minus Morgul before you actually declare into Mordor is because Shadow can draw a character drawing tile like Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane and um, get one of these like one reveal or zero reveals or two reveal or something like that and reveal you in the stronghold and then you get an extra corruption. But with Gollum's Guide, there are no such tiles that do that because... Gollum is guide and they don't reveal you and the eyes don't work on the tile drawing cards and Nazgul search can't be played because the fellowship track is at zero and uh, Nazgul strike can't be played because the fellowship is at zero. So actually it would have been safe for them to hide. And this way I um, pre prevent their opportunity to use Gollum's guide ability. I just do the corruption damage. All right. That was super long winded, but basically I know I want to play uh, I know I want to, um, oh, what am I talking about? I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm talking about why I play Isildur's Bane in a second. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, all right. Anyway, I'm about to play Isildur's Bane and I can play it now because, yeah. All right. So they don't hide. Um, they play Imrahil of Dol Amroth. That's a mega army. I play Breaking. Oh man. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. This is so, so confused. Um, and then... So I play breaking, they take their corruption. And, and so they should have hit, is my point. After um, after being revealed in Minus Morgul, this is a situation where it would have been good for the Fellowship to hide. All right. Anyway, um, I play Cruel Weather as a combat card to cycle more character cards because why not? And uh, I get a hit against Dale. Thank you, Cruel Weather's combat effect. And I'm... Uh, okay, the North is now making progress towards war. They muster into Woodland Realm now. That is the end of the Elven force pool. There are no Elves left. Good job mustering all the Elves and, quite honestly, defending pretty well. And you can see the amount of overkill I had in Lorien. It would have been interesting to imagine what this would have been like if there were all those Gondorian units up there and you basically traded Minas Tirith for Lorien. Uh... And I besiege, I had thought about taking Erebor. Maybe that would have been the right thing to go for, but I didn't. I don't know why. I guess I was worried about this army in Wood, the, the nine hit point army in Woodland Realm doing, like just causing trouble and retaking Dale. I don't know. I don't know what was best. Maybe it was better to just go after Erebor. And he had Dane's Iron, they had Dane Ironfoot's guard for a while. I don't know if, I guess maybe they got rid of it. Okay. Anyway, I move everybody in because I'm just not worried if this army has to move back into Dale. I only have a character die to make this attack anyway, so it's fine with me. They, oh, interesting. So they could have, oh, right, right, right. The North isn't at war. So this unit can't move back into Dale. That's why I did it. Wow. Past Ira was more on top of things than current Ira. Okay, anyway, I muster an elite in Umbar. I can see this army coming and causing trouble. They muster into Lamadon and Dolamroth. If I have Corsairs of Umbar, obviously I'll be very happy to take Dolamroth out from under them. They've already played all of the pre muster or the mustering cards there. I attack into Woodland Realm. I'm gonna cycle character cards because maybe I'll be able to play two character cards. I'm obviously going to play Isildur's Bane before they get into Mordor because I don't want to accidentally draw an eye in Mordor. Eyes are certainly best the best way of inflicting corruption damage against Gollum as guide. And I happen to roll three sixes, which is great. They get four hits back against me. Um, you know, at this point, I, I want to move relatively quickly with military, but mostly I'm just trying to churn through combat cards. All right, I... Draw, I draw another strategy, uh, character card because I'm just trying to get to the red tiles. I have not gotten any red tiles yet. I know that I'm almost certainly going to play Isildur's Bane, but might as well wait. All right. And then they move companions. 
Interesting. So if they had played We Proved the Swifter all that time ago, they could have gone one, two, three, four, five, and gotten these companions to Pilar Gear and just sat there in Pilar Gear. And then they could have <clears throat> made an attack into Pilar Gear and meet up with their army. So, yeah, and they weren't threatening... They weren't threatening Dead Men of Dunharrow because they lost it a long time ago. Um, yeah, so I think I think this is great. This is a good army, but this has been, I think, just maybe a little too inefficient. Uh, and, you know, those extra dice, one, two extra dice, could have been card draws, could have gotten deeper into the character deck. All right, and then I go ahead and play Isildur's Bane now. This was all the discussion before about getting getting revealed if they were hidden anyway it doesn't matter i draw an eye <laughs> so whatever like that's fine I, it's totally fair probabilistically i um you know in this situation i would expect to do eight divided by seven is a little more than one i would expect to do one corruption i did zero corruption okay one fewer corruption than i had hoped but not that unreasonable and um here we go. So they draw uh, Celeborn's Galadrium and Mirror of Galadriel, two Lorien-related things. And they have one blue tile in the pool. I have no red tiles, which is pretty amazing. I draw Palantir of Orthanc, which I'm happy to see. I mean, I would probably prefer a red tile, but at least with Palantir of Orthanc, I know I can make some more progress against them. And then I'm very happy to see all these eyes. So that's good. Um, thinking now... Um, there is one benefit about the fact that they stayed revealed, which is that it gives them a turn to just hide without having to move if I happen to roll a bunch of eyes. Now, I don't know that they have that that long militarily, but they can certainly cause trouble for some, some number of turns more. All right, this is an absolutely... I think it's a really bad roll, I think, but... Maybe it's not actually that bad if they have good character cards to play and if they can cycle if they can cycle their character cards more. Um, so I think probably what I would do is just draw be drawing character cards here. It's a little bit it's a little bit sad. So yeah, I, I would say this is not good. You, you probably want to risk at least one move. I don't know. I mean, this is an unpleasant hunt pool, but I think you probably risk one move. All right. Anyway, I um, they start by hiding, which is certainly correct. And now, seeing that, seeing what they have here, I um, let's see what I do. All right. So I play with a character die, Palantir of Orthanc, with the hopes that either they're going to give me a ring to get rid of the Palantir, or I'm going to get to draw an extra card. And one of the very nice things about Palantir of Orthanc is that you can play a strategy card and redraw a character card. So that will be, I think, good for me. All right, so they are doing exactly what I suggested, which is just drawing character cards outright. Very happy. I'm sure they're very happy to see Bilbo Song. That's one of the best healing in the game. Oh, they also have Othalos in the deck. Yeah, so if they could get deeper into the deck, there are many cards in here that could help them. I play Ring Racer Abroad because I want to just draw into more cards. I don't currently have a good character card to play as a, um, I mean, this is a character card, but I don't have one to mess with the Fellowship. And I think I was worried about attacking with this army into Woodland Realm. I want to um, reinforce this army first before attacking more into Woodland Realm. So I go ahead and move armies. I'm getting this army towards West Herondor just so maybe I can reinforce Pilar gear and just cause a little bit more uh, inconvenience to them. Obviously, I don't expect to hold Pilar gear, but at least maybe I can hold Minas Tirith. I've repositioned armies into Dales to reinforce Woodland Realm, and I get to redraw a character card using Palantir of Orthanc. Um... They play Bilbo's Song. That's obviously great for them. I play Give It to Us. Happy to get my first red tile in the pool. They draw another character card. So, you know, how many cards in there would help them? Othalos. There is another way. Three blue tiles. So about half, five out of 12 
cards before it was six out of 13 when they drew before. So they just drew two cards. One was good. One was mostly useless. That's about what we'd expect. All right, I form my army up in Woodland Realm. They draw another one. Okay, so that was uh, that was bad luck for them. They only got one out of three productive cards when we'd expect them to get one and a half productive cards. I get the mouth with my last die. And then they muster the north towards war. Okay, I mean, the nice thing is that lets you get this unit from Etnmores into Rivendell. If at some point these armies in Moria and uh, Lorien are going to go pivot towards Rivendell. I have not gotten any of the strategy cards that let me move my armies more efficiently, like the Shadows Gather or Shadows Lengthen. That would be really nice with this Lorien army. I'm thinking, hopefully, I'll draw those at some point. But I do get Monsters Roused, which I very rarely play, but could be pretty useful at cutting off this elite unit in Etnmores. And Foul Thing from the Deep obviously is a little risky with four eyes in the hunt pool. I don't want to get the eyes, but also expected corruption damage. If I'm just trying to maximize corruption damage, you can look at this and say, well, there's a total of one, two, three, nine corruption in here and 10 tiles. So the expected corruption damage from drawing Foul Thing from the Deep is nine tenths of a corruption point. So do you want to play a card that does nine tenths of a corruption to the fellowship? Yes, you do. So there are risks and it's scary, but, and you really don't want to get the red tile because drawing this red tile as a one corruption versus drawing this red tile as on Mordor, it's like way more than one corruption uh, because you stop them. So, and I know Mithril Coat and Sting is already gone. So, okay, they draw theirs another way. So now they've gotten they've gotten another useful card. So that was sort of two out of five of their last five draws. All right, they get rid of We Prove the Swifter and one of the end cards. I roll only one extra eye. They get a lot of mustering army movement, at least. Like this army, I guess, can come and do something. And uh, then they move the Fellowship and get a three. So... This is, I think you'd, I mean, this is effectively a two in reveal, which is the same as what any of the eyes are. It would be better to get one of the eyes out of the pool, I think, because those can go up much higher later than two reveal, uh, especially now that I'm rolling 10 dice. You know, it's, yeah, it's probably the worst tile. That's probably the worst tile other than the, other than the stop. So not great. They go back up to eight. I play foul thing here with the logic that I expressed. And by the way, the reason now, now this really applies. The reason why I'm playing foul thing here is that if I waited until they were, if I waited until the fellowship hit again and I hit one of these ones or the three, Gollum could use his guide ability. So this card inflicts more damage while they are revealed because if I had drawn one of the ones, they would use the guide ability for sure and not take any corruption damage. So you can use guide abilities on foul thing, but anyway, so I draw and I get the red tile. So I don't know. I th Would I rather the red tile than one of the eyes? Maybe. Also, looking at that, the expected corruption damage in this case, I, there, were, there was six corruption in there and there were nine tiles. So it was only two thirds of a corruption. So that was a question of, do I want to inflict two thirds of a corruption? Yes, I do want to inflict two thirds of a corruption. Um, it's not that much, but it's not nothing. So I end up inflicting one and getting the red tile. Yeah, I think I... I think I would probably rather the red tile than the eyes because the eyes can deal corruption damage. So it was, is a probably a fine tile. And significantly, uh, that was a Palantir. That was the other thing I wanted to, uh, redraw something. I wanted to play some card to be able to redraw, um, into more character cards using the Palantir of Orthanc. So a little bit of bad luck that they didn't have a will of the West last round or this round, but they're giving me one extra tile, one extra card draw, Maybe not worth a will of the West. All right. So they go up to nine corruption. Um, it's going to be tough. 
They muster in Carrick. What else can they do? I think the Gondorian, the Gondorian pool is totally empty. The Elven pool is totally empty. What else can they do with that muster? I might have saved it to use a ring because they have two rings left. I don't feel like this muster in Carrick does anything. I would, I would use a ring probably. I would save it and use it as a ring. All right. I play Monsters Roused here. And it's a productive use of the muster because it blocks off this unit in Ettenmoors. And I'm, I think my plan for remaining victory points is probably Rivendell and um, Woodland Realm. And then I'm going to lose Pilar gear, but I can probably go take Edoras with, with this army in Orthanc at some point. I can muster up in Orthanc. I don't, I don't know exactly what I'll do. All right, so I'm probably not thinking that far ahead. I think I'm probably just trying to keep corruption pressure, maximum corruption pressure on the fellowship. The red tiles, I've drawn two of them, but there are two more two more red tiles in the last three cards of the deck. So, all right, they play... I'm interesting. So I'm attacking into Woodland Realm here. I play Deadly Strife, and I get... Five hits, a little above average, but not crazy. They get, you're supposed to get a little like a three and three quarters, so a little less than four hits. I got five. Uh, they get four back at me, and that's going to be tough for Woodland Realm to hang on now. I redraw Ulug High, which I'm happy to see in case this army comes and tries to take Minas Tirith. So I now have Ulug High and Hill Trolls. I need to be a little bit careful about the number of... Uh, elites I have because I've mustered them all over the map. Okay. I attack. This is me attacking into Woodland Realm and they play Caliborns here. I I guess so. They're playing Daylight and I don't know. I, I don't think I would spend it against these two regulars. I think I would just let them let them die, probably. All right. Um, I don't get any hits. They don't get any hits. I press. I get enough sixes and they die. So um, that's the end of that. They attack into Pilar gear here, getting no hits, and I get one hit back. And now they've retaken Pilar gear. So obviously they need to, I think their plan is to retake Minas Tirith. I am, or maybe they just hold, maybe they just hold Pilar gear. Also could be reasonable. I would be tempted to just hold Pilar gear, I think. And then muster up Rohan, get... Rohan pretty powerful. All right. I start moving my armies around. I'm at some point hoping to draw Shadows Lengthen or Shadows Gather to make a more efficient route for this army and Lorien. I mean, these armies have been marching all over, <clears throat> all over the map. All right. I just continue moving. I think about this for a second. And then instead of repositioning into Minas Tirith, I send a little lone unit to go towards Edoras because maybe this is a nice way of picking up this extra victory point in Edoras. And the chances of <clears throat> this army in Pilar gear inflicting enough damage on Osgiliath if they attack into Osgiliath are uh, very low. I, I'll still have an elite to retreat. I can retreat into Minas Tirith and then I can play Ulukai into Minas Tirith and defend Minas Tirith if they go that route. And uh, they hide the fellowship. I go ahead and play Shelob's Lair. And they attack into Osgiliath, getting four hits, which is unexpected. I get two hits back. And they do a really nice job just coming in towards Minas Tirith. This army is still a decent size, excellent leadership, but... I do have Uluk High and I also have Hill Trolls. So I have very intentionally, I mean, I've been holding Hill Trolls for a really long time and I very intentionally kept these two regulars here. Now I only have two elites in the force pool. So I don't know how exactly how productive it is to play Uluk High in there. I can see that they probably won't have a chance. They're not going to have a chance to attack actually, you know, attack into the siege in Minas Tirith this round. So I don't know if I go ahead and play Ulukai now or not. No, I keep my armies moving around. I just put a regular into Minas Tirith, thinking that it's unlikely they'll be able to get five hits in a single combat. And the incremental benefit 
of getting um of getting a full hit point uh, two extra hit points in there with Ulakai versus just one extra hit point with that regular remaneuvered from Lasarnach, uh it's not worth the slowing down my armies because I do want to put pressure on them. If they can't take Minas Tirith quickly, then I want to be able to, you know, win the game sooner rather than later. So they go ahead and put Minas Tirith under siege. That makes sense. And um, I use the mouth to... My, what? Had I already... What am I doing? Okay, what am I talking about? I had already used the mouth. Okay, I'd already used the mouth. I just muster an elite into Umbar because now I can maybe go retake Pelargir with this army in Umbar. All right. And if they're slow, if they don't attack Minas Tirith as their first action, then I can play Hill Trolls and really power up this army. So I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose Minas Tirith. But I mostly just want to maintain pressure on the Fellowship because I think it's going to be hard for them to destroy the ring with four steps as is. They've already played Bilbo's Song. And I knew I know that I'm likely to draw um, other red tiles. So I just want to focus on that. All right. They get Axe and Bow not useful. And I mean, the combat effect, Mighty Attack is good. But um I roll one. I allocate one. I roll one more. They get reasonably flexible roll. Those musters are not great for them. I mean, I guess they could be getting they could be getting um, Rohan to war. That that could have been happening, right? If you held in Pilar gear, you could have just been mustering Rohan to war. All right. So they first thing they don't want to lose anything to Will of the West. That's fine. Um, interesting. So the first thing they're doing. I would have been tempted, I would have been really tempted to get rid of the Palantir here with this Will of the West. But I guess they're just trying to take out, they're trying to take out Minas Tirith. Because if they can take out Minas Tirith here, before I reinforce it, that's good. All right, so they're risking more corruption damage to the Fellowship if I just drew a red tile. But, all right, so they're playing Axe and Bow. I think that makes total sense. They get no hits on nine dice. That is unlucky. They should get about one and a half hits plus an auto hit. So it should have been about two hits here. Definitely unlucky for them. And I get two hits back. So that was really unlucky. I don't know if they win this siege, like how that really fundamentally changes the game. Um, because I think the Fellowship is still in pretty dire trouble. But especially because I would then get, I'm going to get the red tile. I'm going to get the, the three in the pool. And then I'm going to, one of these two cards is going to be the other red tile. And I'm definitely going to get that in this round too. So, you know, they have theirs another way, but it's tough. It's tough for them. So anyway, um, I take my one auto hit. They lose two and then they stop, which of, I think you have to stop and just hope, hope that somehow Shadow doesn't have any of the reinforcement cards of which I've played none the entire game. But you know that I have some. Um, I mean, I've literally played no reinforcement card. So anyway, I play, um, I don't play the reinforcement card. <laughs> okay. So my thinking is I'm focused on the fellowship. All I want to do is stop the fellowship. If I play Ulughai first, they're probably going to give up on Minas Tirith and, um, and then move the fellowship. And the thing, the way I'm actually going to lose this game, I think, is if they get a lucky run up Mordor. Right there, there is a zero, a one, and a three in here. And if they have there is another way, if they get another, if they get Othalos at some point, um, that's how they're going to win. So, or if I have a round where I only have one eye in the hunt pool and then they hit the eyes, those are only one reveal. Like, that's how they're going to do it. And I don't have much else much other gas in the pool in the in the tank for hurting the fellowship like it's just the mordor track now so i think this is the right call and um that's kind of cool so i put it in i put i put it in and then i do redraw um the ring is mine so the the bottom like all four of the red tiles were i think in the bottom six cards which is very unlikely but I managed to get through it because um, I just really focused on that. All right, they move now, which is interesting because, like, the hunt pool would have gotten worse 
Had they not moved now, the hunt pool would have gotten worse. All right. So they heal one, they move, and they get a one. So that is obviously excellent. That is the second best tile they could possibly get. And um, they can take no they can reveal and take no corruption damage. And they, they know, I think, that all of the tiles that hurt the fellowship for me being revealed, all of the cards um, that hurt the fellowship for being revealed have already been played. So they're in they're in good shape there. I mean that's that's what you need. Like this is this is how they can win if if they can I mean I guess they do need to take Minas Tirith. So yeah, interesting. Okay. Now I'm very happy to play Willow Guy. And now I have six hit points against their seven. That is rough. That is gonna be tough. And I still have the Palantir in play, so I get to uh, redraw a card when I use a Palantir. And at this point, I draw a strategy card because I don't believe that that um, character card is anything that will hurt the Fellowship. My recollection is that it's Dreadful Spells. And so it's just not, like, I don't need Dreadful Spells right now. I'm happy to just draw more strategy cards for now. I'm going to draw that automatically at the start of next round. All right, they attack into Minas Tirith because what else can they do? They play Heroic Death here, which is good. I get, oh, they get two hits now. That's something at least. And I get three hits against them. So, it, you know, it's unlikely to be able to take out six hit points with seven, even with a Heroic Death. Um, and then they choose to lose um, a regular a regular leader. And I that I just don't think that can possibly be right. Um, I think you just have to lose you have to lose Aragorn or Gandalf. And um because you need the hit points. So anyway, I lose an elite and um and I guess the reason why I lose an elite is I only had one elite in the pool. So they um are in a tough spot. I play Hill Trolls here, and uh, I just don't think it's possible for um, five hit points to take out six hit points in a stronghold. I mean, it seems really, really unlikely. So then I think for a second here, and I have a ring, I have the mouth, um, but what I realized is I have not seen Rohan mustering cards because they discarded Riders of Theoden all that time ago. I actually have not seen Riders of Theoden and um, I have not seen the Red Arrow. And so the odds of them having either the Riders of Theoden or the Red Arrow are pretty high in my mind. And so I realize this is going to, uh, if they play either of those, I will not be able to take Edoras with this puny army. So a better play instead, I do some undoing, a better play instead, because I see that I have an extra muster that is not going to be usable, is to muster into Umbar first, then they, pa uh, what do they do? Then they muster Rohan one towards war, okay, um, and now I do this movement and um, bring this army to Wester Rondor. And so my plan for getting my... 10th uh, victory point, or at least threatening my 10th victory point this turn, is to do one attack into Rivendell, another attack to um, take Rivendell over, and then um, a third attack using a ring into Pelargir, which certainly this army can take Pelargir unless this army comes down, the Free People army comes down to reinforce it, in which case that's fine. They're not making progress on destroying the ring and they have to give me another elven ring to be able to do that. So yeah, that's, I think my plan. And, um, yeah. And it turns out they did have, they did have red arrow. So it was good on their part to hold it. And um, I think it was a good read on my part to realize that the single lone regular could come in and take a seemingly undefended Edoras. Um, all right, so I, all right, they move now to uh, try and take, uh, to try and reinforce Pilar gear. I go ahead and attack Pilar gear right away because 
I would rather get the benefit of the um, of the city. I don't think that I'll be able to hold against Aragorn and um, Gandalf, but uh, still, I, I want to inflict some casualties, so that'll be cool. Uh, let's look. Have they played... One thing I can't remember at this point, because it's been a long time since I played this game, have they played Power Too Great is a question. Is that known to me? So if they had Power Too Great, they could have stalled me for a whole run. Oh, no. Ah, got it. They, they did play it. They played it very early on. Maybe I... Oh, right, right, right. I discarded it. Sorry. Long, long, long time ago. At the very beginning of the game, when Legolas was in Lorien, they played Power Too Great. It was like one of their first or second cards they drew. Right. So I know that I'm safe from Power Too Great. This army can come in and take out Rivendell. All right. Um, and they have literally nothing to muster in there. So, okay. Uh, they are attacking. Oh, I'm, I'm attacking into... Right, right, right. I'm attacking into Pelargir. I'm playing Great Host because I believe that I'm going to have enough to be able to take out um, Rivendell. And I would rather get rid of this regular, I guess, is my thinking. But they have scouts. So nicely played on their part. I have a five hit point army with no leadership and only three combat dice against their six point hit point army and Osgiliath. Seems very likely they'll be able to take Pilar gear back, but maybe I'll inflict a few casualties on the way, and at least they're going to have to give me an Elven Ring to do all this. All right, I besiege Rivendell. They use their last ring to, or they use a ring, their last die to to attack Pilar gear. They get two hits right away, three hits. They get three hits right away. Very nice. I get one hit back, and why am I not taking one more? Okay, good. Oh, wait. Okay, good. All right, and then they press, and I know for sure I'm not going to be able to um, stand against this army, so might as well conserve my troops a little bit. I retreat to La Sarnac because, uh, I don't know, I'm not worried about them getting a military victory at this point. If I have a ridiculously horrible role, then they can take Umbar, but they still can't take Moria that easily, so... Uh, I think I'm fine. And then I go ahead and use this to, whoa, what am I playing? All right. So I see that I have enough rings. Might as well, I can only use one elven ring per round. I want to save a ring for next round if I need to, to use a, um, to use as a, to put it into the hunt pool. If I don't roll any eyes, I want to have two, two eyes in the hunt pool, but I might as well use a ring this round anyway. And I'm not too worried about having enough attacks. I want to draw more strategy cards. Maybe it would have been better to just attack into Rivendell, but yeah, I don't know. This this might have been a mistake because if I don't roll enough attacks, I could definitely be, I could have an issue, but there are just not that many attacks that I need to roll. Um, and I want to muster up an Orthanc so I can come in and take Edoras is basically my plan. Or if they defend Edoras, then take Helm's Deep. All right, so we go to next round. I finally draw Corsairs, not so useful now that I've emptied out Umbar. And um, I allocate one. I roll two more, which I'm happy to see. And I only get two attacks, but it's probably enough. I didn't get any way to reposition leadership, so I only have two leadership here, which is a little bit annoying. But it's still probably enough to take out Rivendell. And there's just nothing they can they can nothing they can do to reinforce this. So I'm just not that worried about it. Um, I did finally draw Shadows Gather. I don't know exactly how much use that will be, but I have Shadows Gather. I have the mouth. So this is three attacks plus one more with a ring. So I have four attacks. So basically that's one attack into Rivendell and then Fords of Eisen, Westham, Net, Edoras for, um, for my four attacks this round. And that gets me to 10 victory points. There's no real way they're going to retake Dale. Uh, certainly not with this with this role, maybe they muster an elite in Carrick, they muster a leader in Carrick, and then they move to Dimrildale, and then they 
or they moved to Old Forest Road and then they attacked Dale, maybe. Also, dwarves are not at war. So this is sort of a situation that if you imagine me having taken out Erebor instead of Woodland Realm, there's this like giant force in Woodland Realm that they can just attack Dale. Uh, so I think now maybe it wouldn't have taken quite as many troops to take out Erebor than it did because there are only, you know, six hit points here, but he could have easily had Dane. And so that's why I went the whole taking out Woodland Realm. And this, for this situation, it just makes it harder to recapture Dale. All right. Um, so let's see what he does. He could theoretically uh, destroy the ring uh, this turn. He could hide, move, move, and then ring to destroy it. He would have to get pretty lucky to get this zero tile, this one tile, and then this three tile last and reveal. <laughs> so I think statistically extremely unlikely. Um, and he didn't draw any help with his character cards. So uh, definitely got a little unlucky for him also with the character cards. But I will say this is the, like, I have zero character cards left and he still has seven. So I put more resources into drawing it and um, it has paid off. I think in the corruption game, if this, imagine this army having sat in Pilar gear, not trying to attack Minas Tirith at all. I don't know. Um, okay. So it's, I think it's going to be really tough for him. I muster once into Orthanc because I know that I have excess dice. He, uh, they hide the fellowship. I play the ring is mine now. I knew that was my last um, red tile, anything that I could do to hurt the fellowship. So I play it just in case. I don't know. Maybe it's a waste of time, but I have extra Palantirs. I have the Palantir of Orthanc. Why not? So I redraw a strategy card, Denethor's Folly. Not particularly useful, but I do have an Isengard regular in this army in Rivendell. So that is a playable combat card in Rivendell. They go ahead and play the red arrow here. I don't know. I why not just I mean it's there's just I don't think there's anything they can do to hold to hold things at this point. Um I go ahead and use the mouth of Sauron. I'm attacking uh I don't know exactly what I'm attacking. I'm either attacking uh Fords of Eisen or I'm attacking Rivendell. Okay, I was attacking Fords of Eisen. Neither of us play any cards. Uh, his unit dies. Who cares? All right. So then he moves the fellowship once and gets an eye. I don't have anything that can hurt him, but now I play shadows gather into Fords of Eisen to have a maximum size attack. He musters into Helm's Deep. It doesn't, there's, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I go ahead and play Oh, this is an attack. So I'm not playing Dreadful Spells as the card effect. I'm attacking now into Rivendell, and I'm playing Devilry of Orthanc because that's the only place where I can play it. And I get no hits. He gets two against me. I do have to inflict four damage, so I have to be a little careful. But I have a lot of rounds of combat and plenty of good combat cards to play. I play Devilry of Orthanc again. Oh, I play Dead... Okay, I stopped messing around. I play Deadly Strife here. Fine. So I guess I was afraid I was afraid of a daylight or something like that because I still haven't seen Theoden. I get my four hits there and he gets two back and that's the end of Rivendell. And they hide the fellowship. I move my um, armies to Westimnet and also now that he only has they only have they only have one die left. I know that Minas Tirith is safe and I have this army in uh, Lasarnak that can easily take Pilar gear. Obviously, <laughs> this is a gigantic army, but if he musters into, if they muster into Edoras, I guess, with their last die, I want to at least be able to threaten Pilar gear. They go ahead and move the fellowship and get a one and are revealed. So if they had had a little more fellowship movement, they could have at least threatened the victory this round. Obviously, they have to exactly draw the zero, but, you know, some chance is better than none. Um, I go ahead and I'm, I think I'm using the last ring and I'm attacking Pilar gear. 
I think is what's happening, but I didn't actually play my ring. And then, yeah. So I take out Pilar gear. Yeah, I should have used, I should have used the last ring, but that's fine. And that was the game. So let's look at statistics. So I believe these are correct. I believe that I rolled more combat dice than they did. And so you can see they were a little high on sixes, but I don't know that that mattered that much. Um, I was a little low on attacks here, but I mean, this all averaged out, you know, you'd expect over the course of the game for things to average out. Being this high on Palantirs for them was probably pretty bad, but had they played it a little differently and gotten deeper into their character deck as I did, maybe, maybe the corruption game would have worked out differently. I mean, turn 14 military victory is a long game. And they got Gandalf turn two and Aragorn turn three. So they got huge value out of those dice. And I think this certainly could have gone differently if the battle to retake Minas Tirith had gone a little differently, if they had gotten a little luckier with their character card draws, or if they had just managed to dig deeper. I think probably if I were thinking about it, I think it was okay to break out of Minas Tirith. That was a little surprising, um, but I guess it turned out okay because they were able to get retake Lorien and basically trade Riven, uh, trade Minas Tirith for Lorien, but just delay while the while the Fellowship was healing in Minas Tirith. Um, I I wonder what th how things would have turned out if they went for. Uh, Mordor without stopping in Minas Tirith, and I wonder if they had just tried to hold Lorien instead of attack out of Lorien. Attacking out of Lorien was probably the biggest issue because even if Lorien fell, I ended up with seven hit points there, and those hit points I reused to retake Rivendell in the end. So often, like even if you lose Lorien, if you manage to inflict enough damage on shadow such that they can't reuse that army the army in lorien tends to be pretty mobile because you can send it south to helm's deep or to rohan or i mean in this game I, it went the first batch uh from lorien went i only had a few left over but they did go to minas tirith all the way from lorien which is very rare but because i didn't have any character dice to reposition leadership i think at that point anyway it was a long game. I really enjoyed it. Um, really nice playing with Potato. And they are pretty new to the online community and I think playing quite quite strongly. So uh, thanks for the game. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, that was the first game that I played in the War of the Ring 2024 tournament. Hope you have a good rest of the day.